Hey everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we are starting out with my Christmas floral miniature, my poinsettia flower. I love this thing. And I've got a couple little versions here to share with you, so I really hope you will enjoy this. We're gonna start with my simple one petal poinsettia flower. And right here, I've got a ball. This thing measures about three eighths of an inch, I believe. Now I'm doing this rather large. Normally I would do this a little bit smaller, but I wanted to do that so that you guys got a good sense of like how I create my poinsettia in the first place. So right there, you can see I went from a ball to a cone shape. Then I flattened this shape with my thumb and index finger. I then used my large needle tool to drag my needle tool up the center of this piece. And then like I make indentations on my leaves, I went ahead and I created three indentations up the side on both sides, which gives me my simple poinsettia flower petal. Now, once I had that, I also then brought in my yellow clay and I'm making very tiny little balls here. I'm going to take these little tiny balls and I'm going to place them really at the base of this petal right here. And just a few of them all together like I have right there. Once I do that, I'm going to bring in my green. I'm going to create a little log here. Once I have that, I'll flatten it down and then I'm going to wrap that around the base of this flower petal. Once I do that, I'll take off the excess, kind of roll it between my fingers, and then I'll pull it just a little bit to give it a nice little stem. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do our three petal poinsettia, and this is the simple version yet again. And I really like to do, you know, most all of my flowers, I like to do like a one, a three, a five. I like to keep odd number type petals into my creations. Uh, the poinsettia is kind of a special case because you can get like a six petal on this and it looks really nice. It's kind of, in my mind, the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> But I do like that five. What can I say? <laughs> Anyways, I'm creating my cone shapes here and then I'm going to drag my lines up, make sure I have them all together, and then we'll bring these together and create our flower. Now that I have my petals created, I'm going to take each one and I'm putting them together where one tucks into the middle area of the next. That's how I kind of put this together. And then notice here too, I got, you know, use your baby wipes. The red really comes off on your hands and especially when you go between yellow and your reds. So I'm taking that, I'm making some more of those little yellow balls yet again. I'm going to place those in the center of my little, you know, three petal flower here. And the reason, you know, guys, the reason why too I make these smaller kinds of make-believe versions, if you will, in my mind, is because sometimes some of my larger projects, they call for maybe a poinsettia, but not a full-blown one. So this is a nice way of being able to play with it a little bit and give yourself some leeway in creating a smaller poinsettia type piece. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do my simple full version of my poinsettia flower. And again, we're starting with those balls. They're all at about 3 8 of an inch. Now you can make this smaller. You don't have to keep this, this particular size. Again, I'm kind of doing that for the camera so you guys get an idea of what I do. So I'm dragging down the middle, three marks up the side on both sides, and we're gonna repeat that five more times or I should say actually four more times. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, now that I have all five together, we're gonna to start just tucking them in one right over the other a little bit. Um, this, I love this particular poinsettia. I love the five petal, it really is nice. I'm taking a little bit of my clay on the underside too, and I'm kind of rolling that if I can. You'll see that on the side, kind of roll it, get a bit of a stem. Once I have that and I get this together, we're gonna bring in my yellow clay. And again, wipe off your hands really well because that red is awfully potent. And then we're making those little yellow balls. We're gonna place those in the center. And this time around, I'm gonna bring in one of my smaller knitting needles. And I'll go ahead and I'm just gonna poke those into this. Or you can actually use, really, in this case, I did use my needle tool here, my larger one, just to kind of poke in a little dot on each of those little yellow balls. Part of this is just to keep those little balls in place. All right, so here we're gonna talk about my, my needle tools. I have a larger one, you see the thickness there, and then I've got my beater type needle. It's, also, it's a little bit less thick than the other one, but these two work great if I'm gonna really make a big poinsettia flower in polymer clay, but that's not necessarily the case all the time. Generally, I'm like, I'm looking at that, okay, and yes, it's a secrets box. <laughs> I have my pins, so I took out one of my pins here. I thought that would be really good. And also my, my regular little needles. Now when I took the pin, look at that difference. Oh my goodness, it was such a thick beater tool needle. And now I've gone down to this really thin kind of, you know, you know a smaller needle. And I love that. But to make this useful for me, I really need to create like a handle on it. So that's what we're gonna do. And then also when you take my pin in, I really didn't see too much of a difference, but there was a slight difference in the thickness. So these can become really nice tools for you to use when you're creating smaller details, especially in your poinsettia flower here. And that's what we're gonna be doing. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and create what I call really my complicated poinsettia flower. And we're gonna be using our small little detail tools, which I just baked these, you know, 275. It was a little bit thicker than a quarter of an inch. So I went about 15 to 20 minutes on those little handles. But once I had those done and they're cooled off now, I'm gonna take my larger, either my beater needle here or my larger needle tool, and we're gonna create those lines like I did with the simple version. Once I have that, I'm taking one of my little tinier uh, needles here, and I'm going to put in, you know, I started with like this little thing, just branching it out, and then I just thought, okay, random little marks all over in those little areas where they're just kind of like open, if you will, just an open, flat piece of red clay. And you're gonna do that on every little section. You're gonna go ahead and create this, and then you're gonna create six of these petals. That's a lot, and this takes a lot more time. But I have to say, once I got these little lines in, the effect was absolutely stunning. I loved it. It was such a neat little thing to do to really make this poinsettia flower just shine.
now that I have all six of these petals made, I took one and I thought, okay, I'm going to pull out that point on the bottom just a little bit because I want to get a bit of a base going, right? So I can kind of start putting them together. So once I did, I thought, okay, let's take three of them and we're going to put them together kind of like I do my regular three, my simple three petal poinsettia. Once I have these three together, I decided now, almost kind of like how I deal with my rows a little bit, we're going to put these in between each of these small, I should say, the other, you know, points that are petals. So you're going to have six petals into this larger flower. And I absolutely just loved how this thing came together. It was beautiful. I want to say it, it didn't look quite, it looked more like, okay, a bit of a star I'm folding over you know kind of rounding out those petals so they're kind of leafing down they weren't like a rounded kind of poinsettia but I still like the look it was really neat and again of course I need to wipe off my hands here a little bit more <laughs> that red is something but don't worry about that what we're going to do is you just mix that red into that yellow it's going to disappear or if you want to just leave a bit, little bit of that red in there i kind of like it when i have a little bit of red kind of mixed in my yellow here it kind of makes it not quite so bright and it's it's kind of it gives it a nice little orangey yellowy kind of look it's fine anyways i'm putting the little yellow balls in notice i'm getting a grip on the bottom here i did pull off my extra and i thought let's go ahead and add in that green stem while we can so i'm creating that log flattening it out wrapping it around the base and then i'll go ahead and once i have that wrapped around you notice here i'm also using my needle tool that can be a help especially when it gets this large and I'm just kind of rolling it around using that needle right in there. And then I'll just pull off that extra on the bottom with the green. That gives me something to hold on to. Placing my yellow balls in and then creating that little indent with either my needle tool or a knitting needle. My detailed poinsettia flower is really just kind of one that's based on more of a little tiny pattern. And I really came to the realization that in doing that really kind of random little marks on the little areas with my poinsettia flower, I, it, it takes a lot of time. <laughs> and you know me, it's like I am not, you know, okay, it can be tedious, right? So to help myself out a little bit, I decided let's go ahead and make more of kind of a pattern type thing. So instead of using my random marks, I decided to treat each little section on my poinsettia petal like, kind of like I would my, uh, my leaves. You know, I just make that mark up the center and then I would go ahead and just make little marks up the side of that particular line. And that's what I'm doing in each of these sections. It becomes more patterned, but it's a little bit more predictable. And this way then I get the detail I want without having to just randomly make a bunch of marks.
Now I want to show you guys, this is my poinsettia cutter. Okay, now really actually it's about, it's, in, about, it's under an inch in diameter. And this thing actually comes from Linda Martin. It's actually labeled as another type of flower. I can't remember which, but I will have details in the description later for that. So if you want to go ahead and purchase it, um, you can go to Linda and see if you can get that particular cutter. You can also look on Amazon or some of the other uh, sites out there, maybe find something similar and be able to use a cutter in this form and fashion. This thing I loved because it was so small and I decided I could go ahead and use my tiny little needle pad or pins that I had just created for a tool on this particular cutter. And it turned out wonderful. I loved it. I was like, oh my goodness. So if I wanted something really, really tiny, I could go ahead and do this. I mean, one inch in diameter, that's not too bad. <laughs> I could use this on all sorts of tiny little things if I wanted to, even making these flowers for my even smaller miniatures. Now here I've got some of my yellow balls and I put a bunch of them in the center of this little flower, but you have to remember when you go down this small from what I had just previously done, size is a thing. You know, it's kind of like proportions in drawing. You have to really make sure you got the right proportion <laughs> for the flower itself. So right here I decided, you know, I, it's too much. I had to take out some of that yellow, so I ripped it out and then I went ahead and put one single yellow piece in the center there and then used my knitting needle or even my little needle tool to complete the piece. Now I'm starting to dot the center on my little tiny poinsettia flower, but I wanted to go ahead and show you right here, look at this tiny little flower and then compare it to my larger one. And it's a heck of a difference just in size. Overall here now, I have all of my different poinsettia pieces that I've done up to this point, but let's go ahead and move on and combine all of these into a nice little poinsettia flower composition. So now I'm bringing in all of my different poinsettias that I've created up to this point. And I'm just bringing them in here and I'm like, okay, now we can bring this all together 
and create just kind of a nice little floral piece for myself that I could place either into a picture piece or whatever I want. I mean, you could go ahead and create, oh, I don't know, you could take this combination and it won't be the same laying down like I've got it here, but you could put it on like, say, some glass Christmas balls, arrange it the way you want. Just be careful when you go, to he go ahead and bake it in your oven, 275. 10 minutes for every quarter inch of thickness. Generally, I would go with this kind of a combination, 10 to 15, just to make sure everything is thoroughly baked. But when you put it in the oven, especially on a Christmas ball, make sure you have a nice base or a way to keep the flowers onto the ball itself. I also suggest maybe using a little super glue just to adhere it onto the glass. Um, if you want to go ahead and use Weld Bond, that's also a good one. Notice here too, I'm also bringing in some of my leaves. Now, I'm also using a very simple leaf. And why is that? Mainly because the detail in these petals are, it's pretty large. And I, I hate to bring a ton of detail into my leaves and my, especially a flower that has a lot of marks in it. So I like to give the eye, as they say, a little bit of a place to rest. And that's why I'm using more of a simple leaf in this particular design. But from here, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys watch my hands talk as I finish up my little composition here with my poinsettia flowers. Okay, so this is the end result of creating my poinsettia flowers in polymer clay. Please use this for study and reference. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm always wondering what you're thinking. Otherwise, I am sending out my biggest hugs to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.